Hi, boys and girls. Um, this is Miss Mahaley here to bring you our new unit or domain, Domain 10, um, Colonial America. And I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction before we get started with today's read aloud. So to get started, um, I want us to take a look at this image here. Um, and I want to review the various groups of people that we've learned about this year who have explored and settled in parts of North, Central, and South America. So this image here shows what we should remember, the Aztec, the Maya, and the Inca. Um, and we know that these Native American people built vast empires that existed for several hundred to thousands of years long before the Americas. And areas of what we now call the United States were inhabited by Europeans. So let me get this rotated back. We also um, learned about Native American groups across North America, um, like the Maya, the Aztec, and the Inca. These Native American groups lived across the area that is now known as North America for many years before Europeans arrived. Okay, the third group that we've also learned about um, are the Viking explorers, right? Um, Leif Erikson, remember he was a Viking and he is the first known European to set foot in North America in an area now known as Newfoundland in Canada. Um, it's important to remember also we learned that Erikson encountered the Native American Inuit already living in Newfoundland. Okay, so and then the most, I guess, recent group we've learned about were the European explorers. Um, these were the explorers Christopher Columbus, Juan Ponce de Leon, Hernando de Soto, Francisco Vasquez Coronado, John Cabot, Henry Hudson, and Samuel de Champlain, right? Um, they came to the Americas after the Native Americans and Vikings. Um, Leif Erikson, not Christopher Columbus, is the first known European to have arrived in the Americas. Remember that, okay? Some of these explorers in their countries were still exploring and settling in parts of the Americas during the time of colonial America, which is the time period that you are going to be learning about in this domain. So we are going to be completely focused on the time period of colonial America. So over the next few weeks, you're going to hear about the next phase of North American history, the colonial time period between the late 1500s and middle 1700s, when England began attempting to establish or set up colonies in the New World. Um, it's important to remember that at the time of the colonial settlement, the Americas were indeed a new world to the Europeans because they had no idea anyone was settled there. Um, we learned about what a colony was, okay? I'm going to switch screens and be able to show you this poster, okay? So this poster is very, very important. This is what um, is the regional map of colonial America, okay? Remember, this domain is focused around colonial America. And England eventually established or set up these 13 English colonies that you see, these 13 English colonies that you see um, along the east coast of North America between the Spanish settlements to the south and the French settlements to the north, okay? I also want to show you this 
second poster. This is a royal portrait gallery. All right, so over the course of the next few weeks, you're going to hear about some of England's monarchs or kings and queens who ruled during the time period the colonies were established. In this domain, you will not hear about every monarch that you see here, okay? You're not going to hear about every single one of them. But these portraits are included to be able to show you a chronological context, meaning the order in which these people fell, okay? And I want you to take notice to Queen Elizabeth I, okay? Right here. And this is who we are going to hear about in today's read aloud. She is the monarch we're going to hear about in today's read aloud. I want to show you this poster one more time. And I want you to take notice of this key down here, the colonial regions. The colonial regions were broken down into three parts, New England, Middle Atlantic, and Southern, okay? The 13 English colonies were divided into these three regions, okay? Um, the geography and the climate of each one of these regions played a big role in how the regions were categorized and how the colony's cultures in each of those um, developed. So obviously, depending on their climate and their geography, that's going to depend on how their culture developed, right? So think about it in present day. Our culture and the way we do things here in North Carolina is probably a little different than how people live and do and the culture and things of like New York or Massachusetts or New Hampshire, all because of the geography and where they are located. So two words, two vocabulary words you are going to hear throughout this entire domain are geography and climate, okay? Geography describes where a place is located and the type of climate or weather and temperatures it experiences. For instance, the climate at the North Pole is cold and icy year-round, but in Florida, the climate is very hot in the summer and mild in the winter. Geography also describes the terrain or like what it, what the landscape is kind of made up of or the physical features that are found in a specific region. Okay, so for today's read aloud, I want you to listen carefully to hear the main ideas or important points regarding England's first attempt to establish a colony in North America. You're going to hear about the very first settlement attempt called the Lost Colony. All right, so let's get started. I need to actually be on this one. And we're going to scroll all the way up to our first one. Here we go. By 1542, Spanish explorers had claimed a large part of South America, all of Central America, and parts of North America. This did not go unnoticed by the kings and queens of England, France, Portugal, and the Netherlands. They, too, sent their explorers off to the New World to claim land and riches for their homelands. Spain had already conquered much of Central and South America, so other European nations concentrated on claiming parts of North America. Before long, there was a race to claim land for these European kings and queens. The settlement and eventual 
colonization of this part of the New World had begun. Soon, European countries realized that not only could they explore the land for new riches, but they could trade with the people who were already living there. European traders traveled to North America to exchange goods with Native Americans. As a result, some Native Americans learned to speak a little French or English. In turn, many Europeans learned to speak native languages, such as Aleguanian as well. In the late 1500s, England was becoming more and more alarmed or shocked and disturbed at how much land the Spanish were claiming in what is now called Central and South America. The Spanish were not only gaining land, they were becoming wealthier too. It was time for the English to take action. In in the 1580s, an English explorer named Sir Walter Raleigh set off to explore parts of North America. During this expedition, he landed on an island called Roanoke Island off the coast of what is now the state of North Carolina. Raleigh returned home eager to claim this land for England. In 1585, he persuaded Queen Elizabeth I to allow him to send a group of settlers to Roanoke Island. Queen Elizabeth agreed. However, when the settlers got there, they found it difficult to survive in this new land. This was especially true in the winter because they weren't able to plant crops. When the settlers ran out of food, many people starved to death. As soon as they could, the demoralized settlers returned to England. In April 1587, the English made a second attempt to settle on Roanoke Island. This time, a man named John White led more than 100 men, women, and children, including his own daughter, Eleanor Dare, and her husband to establish a colony in the New World. Once again, the settlers faced the same challenges and their supplies ran low. However, this time, only John White and a small crew sailed back to England for supplies, while the others remained in the colony. Just nine days before he returned to England, his daughter had a baby and named her Virginia Dare. White's granddaughter was the first English baby born in the New World. When White and his crew arrived back in England, he learned that the country was at war with Spain and he would not be allowed to return to Roanoke Island. It was not until 1590 that he was able to take a ship and return to the colony. When White family arrived back on Roanoke Island, what do you think he found? Sadly, he found nothing. Well, the island was still there, along with some abandoned dwellings, but the colonists were nowhere to be found. White's only clue to where the colonists might have gone was the word Crotone, carved into one tree trunk, and the letters C-R-O carved into another. Crotone was believed to be the name of an island about 50 miles south of Roanoke Island. John White thought the carving may have been a message that the settlers relocated to that island. John White tried to go to Crotone Island to find the colony, but a huge storm damaged his ship and forced the crew to return to England. White was never able to return to the New World again. The mystery of what happened to these English settlers remains unsolved today. Roanoke Island has become known as the Lost Colony. One reason many, English, many early English settlers struggled to survive was because they weren't prepared for how different their lives would be in this new land. It took several attempts before they figured out how to survive in a place where the climate 
soil, landscape, plants, animals, and people were quite different from anything they had known before. Eventually, the colonists learned how to use the natural resources that were available to them, and they became less reliant on supplies from England. And so, after a number of difficult years and false starts, England eventually established small settlements up and down the east coast of North America. Initially, these settlements were nothing more than tiny villages. Over time, the villages became towns. By the 1700s, many of the towns had grown into cities that were centers of trade and industry. In the end, 13 successful English colonies were established in North America. So I want to take a second real quick to go back and um, reiterate what it means when they say that after a number of difficult years and false starts, false starts means failed attempts. All right. So after many times of failing, oops. As the 13 English colonies began to take shape, they were naturally divided into three distinct regions, like what we talked about in the beginning. The New England, Middle Atlantic, and Southern regions. These regions were different from each other in many ways. For example, in New England, because of the colder climate, rocky terrain, and poor soil, it was difficult for the colonists to farm many crops. Instead, New England became known as a center for fishing, furs, timber, and shipbuilding. In the Middle Atlantic region, a wide variety of crops could be grown because of the milder climate and rich soil. As a result, agriculture, including cattle and wheat farming, became a successful way of life for many. In the warm, sprawling southern region, people created large farms called plantations where they could grow large amounts of different crops such as rice and tobacco. People came to North America at different times and for many different reasons. Some came to get rich, whereas others came for religious re reasons. Some hoped to escape poverty, and some were simply curious and adventurous. English monarchs played an important role in the establishment of the colonies, particularly Elizabeth I, James I, Charles I, Charles II, and George II. As we travel on our journey, we will refer to the regional map of colonial America, the Royal Portrait Gallery, and a timeline that we're going to create together. So again, you will see this portrait gallery several times throughout this domain, and you will see this colonial region map throughout this entire domain. <clears throat> so my question to you, are you ready? to go on this journey because we are going to begin next time in Jamestown, Virginia. So get ready, buckle up for this awesome domain, and we will talk to you soon.